there's a train going by. Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today in the bonsai zone, I am going to be repotting two redwood trees. I have a dawn redwood here and a coastal redwood. I collected a lot of seeds last fall, so today I'll be soaking them and getting them ready for planting. That's coming up today in the bonsai zone. Tonight is a big test of the greenhouse. We're going down to minus two degrees Celsius, so a couple of degrees below freezing. And I'm going to leave my tropicals inside the greenhouse and hopefully they'll survive till morning. I've been working on the greenhouse today, sealing it up. I got that greenhouse tape and sealed up any uh, splits in the plastic, any cracks or seams. I made sure it was all sealed around the door, around the back of the greenhouse. I put caulking on the window. There was kind of a big gap at the bottom of the window down here, so I've got that all sealed up. Yeah, so everything's ready for tonight. I will keep monitoring the temperature. I've got a temperature and humidity gauge. You can just see it in there, that white little device on the table. So I can monitor the temperature and humidity, and I'll come out here with a flashlight at night and see how it's doing and hopefully it'll hold a temperature a few degrees above zero at least. I'm going to use the big kind of ceramic heater down here. It's not on at the moment. So in the daytime, uh, the high today was eight degrees. So in the greenhouse right now, it is 35.7 degrees Celsius and 18% humidity. Even though I've misted all the walls in here and th the bench tops, the ground has water on it. The humidity is still only 18% in here. I don't know why, maybe because the walls are so cold that the water is condensing on them. I think it's steaming my camera up. All right, time to get out of here. I'll keep my eye on the temperature in the greenhouse and when it cools down enough, I'll turn the heat on and then keep track of the temperature throughout the night. I'm going to start today on my Dawn Redwood taking it from a pre-bonsai and getting it on the road to becoming a bonsai tree. The buds on the Dawn Redwood are swelling. You can see them on this branch here. They're swelling all along the branch and are about ready to come out. So it's a good time to do the root pruning and repotting of this tree. I'll also be doing some styling. I've got to choose my branches, my leader, and get this kind of underway. I've never seen a clip and grow uh, Dawn Redwood tree on the internet before, so this will be a first and we'll see how it goes. I'm going to start with some basic styling to this Dawn Redwood tree, and to do that I need to go study some full-size Dawn Redwoods and get some styling ideas. I know of three Dawn Redwoods within biking distance of my house, so we'll go have a look at those. The first Dawn Redwood we're looking at is one I've showed to you before on videos. It's just down the street from my house, and it's not very old. I remember them planting it. So let's look at the structure of it. I haven't showed you with the needles off of it, or the leaves off of it. So the trunk goes from the ground, totally vertical and absolutely straight. It just tapers from thick at the base to thin at the top. All the branches, reach upwards at about a, that's probably a 45 degree angle, and pretty consistent, and it forms what I would call a, a diamond shape. So it's pointy at the top, it kind of has that, that diamond silhouette at the top, and also kind of at the bottom where it comes back in. So there's no like branches coming off horizontally off the bottom like you'd see on a typical tree. So that's a look at a, a younger one. And I would guess this is probably 25 years old. We'll have a quick look at the base. Uh, a good feature of a Dawn Redwood is these buttress trunks. The way the veins grow around branches. Um, you can see some of the features on the trunk. Lots of kind of roots, like that ridge kind of trunk going into the ground. 
There's a surface root here, kind of transitioning into the soil. And this one, you can see the leaves just coming out on these shoots here. Whereas up top, I don't see the shoots out. Interesting. When the shoots are coming out, they look a lot like a larch, don't they? All right, let's head off to uh, tree number two now. I'm at tree number two now. This is a larger tree. I would say it's probably twice as old. So maybe 40, 50 years. Let's have a look at the structure of it. So now this one's kind of interesting because if we pan up, it's got that tall vertical central leader, but the central leader has died on it. I can see deadwood at the top. And if I come down to about this level, I can also see bark peeling off and it's dead. So I don't know where the live part starts, but definitely the top of it's died off. And I think because of that, we've got a lot of growth down low on the tree. You can see all these lower branches. Again, coming off at like a 45 degree angle. And the overall shape, I'll have to move way back on this one to get the whole tree in. I'm gonna have to go way back. <laughs> ah, pretty well gets it in there. So again, it's a, what I would call a diamond shape. It's got the flat part at the top, the diamond part underneath, forming that kind of diamond shape overall to the branching. So. That seems to be a theme on these trees. So that might be the style that we try and develop on our uh, Clip and Grow Don Redwood. Let's go in now and have a look at the base of the trunk. We'll just kind of walk around it and have a look at all the features. So again, it's got that really ridged, veiny kind of trunk. You can see kind of the veins going around the branches there. Interesting, very unusual kind of branches, the way they kind of blend in with the trunk there. I guess they've kind of grown together. You can see the where they're separated there. All coming up at that 45 degree angle. Wow, yeah, really interesting tree. All right, let's head off to tree number three now. This wasn't the tree that I was intending on visiting. I just came across it on my way to the other tree. So this one looks like uh, maybe halfway between the ages of the last two trees. I'll pan up. So this one definitely has a living top. And you can also see there's cones all over the branches. So definitely a seed producing tree. These lower branches also have some green needles coming out on them. Kind of interesting. Whereas the upper ones definitely don't. So yeah, really nice base to this tree again. You can see all those live veins. There's a nice lower branch there. Really interesting. Let's just go back and look at the overall shape of it now. Pull way back. And again, it's got that kind of diamond shape. But this one's more, I would say more triangular. And I think that's because the lower branches start right down at the base. So it kind of the other trees, the lower branches started part way up the trunk and it kind of made that diamond shape. But this is a tall tree, so it's more of a conical shape. But it still has those 45 degree angle branches, a straight, straight trunk with lots of taper. So now I'll go and try and find that tree I was originally looking for. This tree here isn't a Don Redwood 
but it has a very similar style, that sort of diamond-shaped top. And this tree is a ginkgo biloba. So in the bare silhouette, the two trees look really identical. You know, other than this doesn't have that thick trunk at the base, but the basic styling is quite similar. So maybe, you know, when I develop my ginkgo, I'll get, you know, the styling more in this type of a shape. I finally found the last Don Redwood. It's a younger tree. Got that classic diamond shape for sure. And not a lot of unusual development at the trunk yet. It's quite smooth. You can see the roots spreading out on the ground here. Yeah, it's quite a root system on it. Look at that, it goes right over there towards the house. Searching for water, I guess. Yeah, so there's the base of that tree. Bark is shedding like crazy here. Must be growing. No growth out of the buds yet. It's a bit of a dead section on top up there. But yeah, and again, really straight, straight trunk to the tree and those angled branches and that kind of diamond shape. There's a really cool pine behind it. Check out this pine here. Talk about contorted branches. So I believe this is a Scots pine. It sure looks like it. It's got the red bark up top. Really twisty branches. And one branch that goes really low, almost down by the house there. A dead branch over here. Yeah, quite a quite a fascinating tree. Really, really twisty. I like that. So it's time to get on the bicycle and head home now and start the work on our bonsai trees. That was a fun afternoon trip out on the bicycle looking at Don Redwood trees. So it's given me a lot of ideas for the styling of this tree. I definitely want that straight trunk tapering all the way to the apex. And I want these branches coming out at all these 45 degree angles, kind of getting that diamond shape to the structure of the tree. So let's start pruning. I'm looking at the base of this tree. It starts off quite well. There is one root over here that comes up out of the soil and back in. Uh, there's a few roots here too that are sticking out of the soil. And right now the tree's on a slight angle. If we go up, I've got a lot of branches. It uh, looks like a lot of them are dead. Yeah. So I've got to find if any of those branches are alive. And then I've, if I go up here, I can see the the main trunk line here is being cut off and then I've got a bunch of side branches growing. So I'll have to pick my one leader because I want this tree to look, you know, have a nice straight trunk. So it'll probably be the skinnier one here and I'll prune off this entire, you know, thicker other leader. And there's another branch growing vertically beside that. So I just want the one tall straight leader. I've got the tree on the turntable. So now we can start the pruning here. Um, First thing I'll do, I'll remove all the dead branches, so there's one there. It looks like the dead branches kind of turn a whitish color. Another one here. And they're very brittle. They just snap like twigs. A lot of them just break off with your hand. This will clean up this section of the tree. Yeah, the live branches are still very flexible, whereas the dead ones are brittle. So the next major step will be to reduce all this congestion here in the middle, keeping my one leader, which will be this one, and removing these two. So let's do that now. Actually, I'm going to remove the smaller one first, so I'll come in here. 
Right like that, and there it goes. And now I've got this large one at the side here. So that's going to have to be taken back right to about here, I believe. Big cut, here I go. Like that. Wow. That's taking a lot off. I'm going to try and there's a the remains of the leader here. I'll prune that away. And I've got to do some more work on this section. You can see it's kind of still bulging out, so I've got to take some more material off here. Like that. Like that, I think. That looks pretty good. Now beside this leader, my new leader, I have another branch I can remove here. Get rid of that double leader and a dead stub in here. So there's my continuation of the apex now. The apex here is kind of tall and straight, which is good, but it has no taper. So I think I need to cut it off and let a new leader grow up here to get some a bit of taper to this part of the trunk it, it's getting maybe a little tall too so I'll take the top off of my main leader all right I have to determine I've got some good buds in the side here hmm. I think I've got a good vertical shoot here so I'll take it off to here for now leaving a little bit for dieback like that and I think that'll be my new leader. I'll just take the tip off that. That's my new leader to this height. I think that's pretty good. So the next step, I'll have to sort out the branch structure, deciding what branches I want to keep and what ones I want to get rid of. Don Redwoods are fast growing trees. So I'm trying to determine how big do I want this tree as a bonsai. The answer is probably quite large. You know, it's got a lot of growing to do to get that nice trunk on it and that root spread so I think in the end this will be a fairly large tree so I'm wondering where do I want where do I want my lowest branches to start and I'm thinking probably not this low although some of those trees had branches coming off quite low in the trunk huh. well I'm going to there's a this branch is nice here. It, it comes out in a radial direction from the trunk. So, you know, if this is my trunk, the branch comes straight off the trunk. It doesn't come off the diameter of the trunk on an angle. So uh, this one does, it crosses underneath this other branch. So I'm going to remove that. So I'll remove all my branches that just aren't in a good location and aren't a good direction. So that gets rid of that one. This one, there's a fine one in here that's kind of close to the other branch, so I'll get rid of that. Like that. I think it was dead already, but... There's one growing up here beside the main leader, so I'll get rid of that. Like that. In this area, I've got one, two, three, four, five branches. So I'll want to pick one of those and... This one is kind of too horizontal, so I'll get rid of that one. This one. is okay, I think there's a thick one here that divides into two. And I think that's the best branch to keep, so I'll get rid of all the others. And this one down here. And you can see I'm already getting a bulge in that area where all those branches were coming from. So it's a good idea to reduce it down to one branch. And I'll even take a bit of that off. Now I've got these two, this branch then comes out into a Y. Um, I'm going to, I've got a lot of buds out here. So I'll definitely prune the tip off the branch. 
I got some buds out here too. Nothing back down here. I would like some buds coming off here, but nothing yet. So I'll just play it safe and prune the tip off and we'll try and chase these down to get some back budding, you know, closer to the trunk of the tree. I'll just take this pruning stub off there, like that. Now I've got a branch over here that it comes out and then I've got two growing straight up that I want to remove, so I'll do that. They're just not fanning out from the tree. And then I've got a lot of kind of deadwood stubs there that I've got to just clean up a bit on this branch. Like that, that's pretty good. And some of these other branches, I've got some buds, so I'll prune them back. So they're not quite so long. And again, this is a fairly new species for me, so I'm not sure how the tree will react to all this pruning and that, so it's something I'll learn over the years, I'm sure. I've got one branch coming up here, and then there's a branch coming off of it that grows in towards the trunk. So I'm going to take that off and just see if anything develops on this branch. If nothing does, that'll be a dead branch for the future, and I'll have to remove it, but... Okay. I think that's done the pruning on the tree. I think it um, looks good and simple. The next step will be to get the tree out of the pot. All right, here I go. Lift it out. Wow. All right, I'll get this on the turntable. I don't know if I have drainage screens down here. I don't think so. I don't see any. Lots of roots, that's for sure. So I'll start combing out the root base now. Starting from the center and raking outwards. And you can see a lot of the soil is quite loose in here. I got this tree from Chris Hendry, the bonsai guy. I got it last fall. So this is the first time I've worked on it. Octopus roots. I have to get those sorted out. I don't know if these were roots or branches. I think they were roots. It seems like we're getting down to more of a root base down lower here. And some thicker roots. So we might get a little extra trunk length on this. I don't know. So I'm getting down to I think, you know, the root base down here, even though there's some quite bizarre roots higher up. So I think I'll start working on the bottom of the tree now. So I'll turn it around so the tree's off the edge of the table and I'll start combing out from the bottom, trying to get all these, there's a lot of roots that have kind of circled the bottom of the pot. I've got to get untangled and sorted out bit of a bird's nest down here. If you can see the roots going round and round. They've sure grown well on this pot, I can tell you that. And it seems all the roots are at the bottom of the pot, which indicates they probably like the moisture down there. I would think they're quite a moisture-loving tree. The way I saw those roots spreading out on that one tree that we visited today. The roots are running right across the whole lawn. So I think I'm going to have to do a bit of root cutting here to get rid of some of these really wild, crazy roots. Starting with this one that comes up out of the soil. All right, let's try and get that crazy root off there. My goodness. I think I'm going to have to take... So here's the base of it. If you can see it in here, it comes out. There's a lot of roots kind of at this level, which it was kind of the planted height, and then there's more roots down at a lower level. So I'm going to use this lower level as my base of the tree or my root base, and all these upper ones will come off. So 
Well, let's start doing that. Here I go. There's one. I'll take these dead roots off here. We want a, a clean trunk line, but we do want all those kind of bulges that will form eventually, just like on the full-size trees. Here's a root that's way too high here. Get rid of that. Now we're getting to this snake-like root. So I'll come in. I'm wondering if I should wash this root system first. I think I will. I don't want to use my good cutters on these roots without washing all the soil off the roots. So I'll do that first. All right, here I go. That's good enough. You can see the roots now. Most of the soil's washed away. Won't dull the tools as much when I'm cutting. I can clearly see the root base now too. All right, now with the roots washed, I can see a little better what's going on. I can see there's a root wrapped around here that just broke off. And I'm going to remove this one. And I'm just trying to get in at a good angle about here, like that. That removes that one, and now I've got to untangle it. Like that. So I'm hoping, you know, the living veins will grow around and swell around that pruning point and it'll get becoming an interesting feature on the trunk eventually. So here's my root base down here. I'm still removing roots that are too high. That one, this one, that one. The rest are bad. This one is coming off the trunk at a funny angle, so I'm going to remove that totally. Like that. Okay, so I think, I don't know. I think that's got my root base kind of sorted out. There's some funny roots going down here, but if I get some better roots growing out more, in a more horizontal direction, I can eventually remove those lower ones. I will, I, I have to get rid of all these roots that are circling around. Um, so it's, it's gonna take some major root pruning here. The idea is not just to have the tree live, but to get a tree that can become a really nice bonsai. So a root like this has to be removed at some time. And whether you remove it later, I don't know. I, uh, I'm going to do it now, so. I'm going to keep the nice radial part and just prune off the part that curls. So right here, just like that. I don't even know if I can get that out now. There's another one here. Comes out nice and straight, then it dives down, and then it curls. So I'll cut that off too, like that. So that's getting rid of some of these nasty roots. There's a root trap between here that I'm trying to get out. Like that. Um, now I've got some roots here that are doing the same kind of thing. They come out in a nice radial pattern and then they do strange things. So I'll cut off the bad part of the root. Keep the good parts. So, getting rid of a lot of roots here, but We'll find out how well these trees do after severe root pruning. So there's some roots here. I've got to do the same thing. They come out and then they start curling funny. Well, if that one comes, that one can come off there and this one here. Like that. And that almost releases this ring of roots at the bottom. This bird's nest of roots. I'm just trying to sort out this one that's tangled up in here there. Okay, so we'll park that over there. And I still have this one curly root. It comes down and then back in on itself, so that one's coming off too. Like that. And I think 
that's all we're going to do to the roots at this point in time which is quite enough and we'll plant it you know about this high so this is all safely in the soil so that's the next step now to get the tree planted I'm going to plant the Don Redwood in this nice Korean drum style mica pot should fit in there quite nicely so I'll get a drainage screen cut out for the bottom now I think I'm just going to put separate ones for this I'm running low on drainage screens and it's not exactly easy to go to the store and get some I would have to put a order in online and then go to the parking lot and get curbside kind of pickup so and last time I did that it took many many hours so I'll make do with what I have for now so that will do we have our holes covered I'm going to add a layer of the original soil because it was quite coarse and that'll be kind of my drainage layer so here I go with that so that should do that's a nice coarse drainage layer and then I'll put some of the fine bonsai soil on top pile it up in the middle and then I can plant the tree now I think somewhere here will be my front so I'll I'm going to put the tree in the middle it's a round pot no sense offsetting it or anything get those roots in there I want my trunk fairly vertical here you can kind of see how I've got the tree planted now I'm checking the height it's too high in the pot so I'll twist it until I bring it down so my root base is safely below the lip of the pot that's getting there about there I think it's on a little bit of an angle we've got to straighten the tree out a bit more like that and then I'll add some more bonsai soil making sure all my roots are nice and radial I guess that's about as good as they get I'll have to prune off those ones sticking up they just don't want to go in the soil at all there all right feels nice and firm in there we will have to add some more soil and I'll kind of build up a bit of a mound in the middle so the trees safely you know planted in the soil so I don't have any roots that are going to dry out on the surface there and as this matures and grows we'll slowly uncover that nice root base if the tree grows that'll be the question I have faith in you Don Redwood you can do it I'll give it a water now well it's a bit of a stick in a pot but I think it'll have a good future as long as it survives this root pruning operation let's give it some water now give it a nice thorough watering I'm going to put this on the floor of the greenhouse tonight I just don't want it freezing until the roots start to grow give it a bit of protection because it's newly potted give it a good thorough watering wash the top of the tree get any dust off it okay that'll do it yeah so that's my stick in a pot which will someday hopefully be a nice Don Redwood I'm really excited to get my Don Redwood growing as a bonsai I'm going to do the coastal redwood in part two of this you know two-part series before we go I'm going to show you some of the seeds that I'll be soaking and then planting in the near future the first seeds I have soaking here are tamarind seeds you buy them in the grocery stores the tamarind pods and they're really tasty you eat them and then you keep the seeds so I'm soaking them for 24 hours there's one floating here that's probably 
not a good seed. And then I'll plant them and they should all germinate. So I'll keep these in the greenhouse to keep them above freezing until, you know, part two of this series where we go to plant them. The next seeds I'll be soaking are some more Royal Oaks. I collected these uh, October 2019. So just last fall. So these are the these are the Royal Oaks and mixed in it are some London plane tree seeds. They kind of a fuzzy ball and then uh, on the plane trees and then you get little seed pods in those fuzzy balls but I'm just concerned with the Royal Oaks for now. We'll get those in there. I'll put the plane tree seeds back in here. There we go. So there's <laughs> there's some that have sunk. I think there's five on the bottom and four floating on the top. So I'm pretty sure the ones that float aren't very good. But we'll see. Maybe they'll sink. I don't know. So that's got those soaking and we'll again plant those in part two of this video. The third kind of seeds I'll be planting are also oak seeds and I, I'm i not sure what kind of oak they are but there's a beautiful oak that I found these acorns underneath. You can see the little caps of the acorns and these just fit in nicely like that. Just like that. So I'll be soaking those also. That one's a floater. Another floater, floater. I can feel the nut inside the shell rattling around. So I think they're okay. I think there's just air in them. So I think by soaking them, they'll fill up with water. There's one here that looks like a squirrel or something chewed the bottom off. We'll try it, who knows. There, they're soaking. We'll see how they do. It's 7.30 in the evening now, and it's really starting to cool off outside. The uh, sun is still hitting the greenhouse there, but we better go check what the temperature is inside. It's warmer in here, it is 17.1 degrees Celsius and 42% humidity. So, yeah, it's pleasant in here, but I think that sun is getting really low. You can see most of the greenhouse is in shade now. Water is condensing on top like crazy. All around, it's starting to drip down on the tree actually. Trees look happy though. All right, so I, I think I'm going to turn the heater on. So, that's fan, and then I got it. That's high and low. I'm gonna go high, and temperature is up high. So that's up to the maximum. So that should keep it, I can feel warm air coming out. So hopefully, I'll keep checking on the greenhouse, but uh, you know, I don't want it to get too cold out here. If I can keep it above five degrees Celsius, I'll be happy. All right, I think the trees will be quite happy too, if they stay kind of warm. So we'll keep an eye on everything tonight. Looks like that sun's got maybe 10 minutes before it kind of, before the greenhouse is in total darkness. So we'll check in later tonight and see how it's all doing. It's 8.30 now. Let's go check how the greenhouse is doing. The sun has definitely set. There's no light on the greenhouse at all. So let's see what temperature it's sitting at right now. Okay, I'm looking in. I can see the temperature gauge. It says 13.8 degrees and 50% humidity. 
So, yeah, that's getting, it's getting cooler for sure. I'll see how it does. I'll come out in another hour or so. See if it's maintaining that kind of temperature or if it's going down. The outside temperature is really cool now. I would guess it's uh, maybe three or four degrees. There is almost a full moon out, if you can see it right in the center of the frame there behind that tree. It's almost full, not quite. Sure looks nice. There's a look at the moon up there. It's 10 o'clock at night now. I'm going to go back to the greenhouse and check it out. It's getting really chilly outside. There's the greenhouse door. I can hear the heater running in there. And can I see the temperature? I can't. I'll have to go inside. So here we go. Okay, it doesn't feel really warm in here. Uh, our temperature is 10.6 degrees. Fifty-five percent humidity. So that's okay. Doing all right so far. It's really cold outside now. I think it's going to drop a few more degrees. There's my trees. Wow, they look different with the flashlight. Dragon tree. <laughs> kind of cool in this light, eh? Doing all right so far. It's not, I was worried that the temperature was going to be, you know, getting close to the five degrees, but it seems to be holding around 10 degrees so far. So I'll check it again in another hour or two. Let's see what the large forest looks like at night. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's kind of spooky. Really, it's quite spooky at night. I'm heading out now for the last time. It's after midnight and the temperature has gone to the lowest. It's minus two degrees out now. And I'm heading over there to the greenhouse. So this is it. If it's still kind of 10 and above in here, I think the trees will be fine for the night. If it's dropping below 10, I don't know. Let's go in and have a look. Open the door quick. So far, it feels kind of okay in here. Okay, let's see our temperature here. 6.9 degrees, 61% humidity. 6.9, eh? Oh. It's getting cold. Come on, heater, do your thing. Should be okay. 6.9. It's dropped from 10, so that's about 3 degrees. Even if it were to drop another 3 degrees in the next couple of hours, it would still be above zero. There's no danger of frost in the greenhouse here. It's kind of protected. So... I'm going to risk it. I think, I think everything will be okay. All right, we'll check in on the trees tomorrow morning and we'll find out what happened. If they survive the cold, cold night. If they do, it kind of gives me confidence for later on in the week where it's, there's a uh, two nights now that are gonna drop below zero to minus one. So I can see the moon up there. Shining in through the greenhouse. See it? That's pretty cool. All right Time to go to bed. Hi everyone. It's 8 o'clock in the morning the next day Let's see how everything did Everything's frozen the Surface of the soil there is frozen Yeah on the larch forest too 
buds seem fine, the new needles. All right, here's the test. Let's go in and see how the trees are. Okay, so it doesn't feel real warm in here when you walk in. It is 10, 10.5 degrees and 66% humidity. So, yeah, everything looks good. Well, that's a relief. You can see there's some new leaves that came out here. Yeah, everything looks good. I guess it uh, must have stayed above freezing in the greenhouse. Oh, that's a relief. I was really worried. Okay, so that's good. So the uh, greenhouse is good at least till minus two Celsius at night. Now I did have a sunny day that day, so all the ground in the greenhouse would be fairly warm. But still, it did, did a good job. Hopefully, we'll get a sunny day today and it'll warm this greenhouse up. The reason I left the trees out, rather than bringing them back into the plant room, is it's such, you know, in the daytime if the sun's out, it's so nice in this greenhouse and it's so good for the trees. And it gets them used to this cycle, uh, being outside. So when the good weather does come, they'll be growing. Um, I've noticed if I bring my plants out in kind of the end of May, that the whole month of June is kind of the trees getting used to that transition from indoors to outdoors. So I'm hoping by bringing them out a month early, that transitional period will happen in May, and then when June comes, they'll be actively growing. So I'll get, you know, four good growing months, at least four out of the year. Probably five, because I'll leave them out till the end of uh, October. So that, that'll be cool. That means uh, the trees will grow with much more vigor. From such a cold night, minus two degrees, it's back out to a nice day today. It's warmed up now. The heat's been off in the greenhouse and we are at 28.3 degrees in there and 29% humidity. So pretty nice for the plants in there. Even though they had a cold night, it was all worthwhile to get this nice sunshine on them. All that heat and humidity. Yeah, they'll be really happy. So that'll help them adapt to growing you know, in the sunlight. So hopefully, as I said, by the time June comes, these plants will be growing instead of just adapting to the outdoors. That's all for part one of this two-part series on redwoods. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <laughs>